In a recent video we had a look at this, the Latitude 120L, and we ran Windows 10 on it because it has an Intel Pentium M Dolphin CPU, currently Intel's oldest line of laptop CPUs to be able to run Windows 10. Now also I got to spend some time with this, an HP 14S recently, and it is particularly interesting because it is equipped with a Tiger Lake Core i3 CPU, currently Intel's latest and greatest. And in terms of their first launch dates for the CPUs, these machines are around 16 years apart. So in this video I want to have a look at what kind of performance difference 16 years of progress has brought us. Apart from the fact that these are both Intel based laptops with a 14 inch display, a keyboard and a touchpad, that's basically the only similarities they share as the differences are vast. The 120L is nearly twice as thick and nearly twice as heavy as the 14S. Now granted you could get slimmer laptops back then and the same is true today but the 120L was fairly typical for a 2005-2006 laptop design and so is the 14S today. In terms of hardware specs, there has also been great progression. We've gone from murky TN panels to crisp IPS panels, from DDR2 to DDR4, from parallel ATA hard drives to blazingly fast SSDs, although the 14S only has a SATA 3 SSD instead of the most recent NVMe drives. And on the CPU front, there's a world of difference as well. On one hand, we have the Pentium M Dothan 740, a single core chip at 1.73 GHz with 2 MB of L2 cache and on the 90 nm process. On the other hand we have the Tiger Lake Core i3 1115G4, a dual core part with hyperthreading, base frequency of 3 GHz and a turbo boost up to 4.1 GHz and is made on Intel's latest 10 nm super thin process. And both are similar TDP wise. Pentium M at 27 watt and the Tiger Lake i3 at 28 watt. And to put it into a bit of a perspective, between Dothan and Tiger Lake, we've had well over 10 different Intel microarchitectures. And between 90 nanometer and 10 nanometer superfin, there's also been around 8 uh, different process nodes. And the Core i3 1115 G4 is also a particularly interesting processor, as in the Tiger Lake lineup, nearly all parts have now become quad core, with i3, i5, and i7. And the 1115 is the highest clocked dual core part. And having two less cores has freed up both power and thermal headroom to raise the frequencies. So in this case, we have a 1.7 GHz base frequency at 12 Watt and a 3 GHz base frequency at 28 Watt. And this is actually equal and better than the uh, i7 1185G7. So it's a relatively inexpensive way, this i3, for getting fantastic single threaded performance. But with these Tiger Lake chips, there is some room for variability in what you're actually going to be getting in terms of performance. As you have these 12 and 28 watt TDP modes, but it's up to the manufacturer to con actually configure in what mode the chip runs. So with the 14S, luckily HP hasn't chosen to lock it down as in POV Ray. We can see it boosts to 4.1 GHz effortlessly and then maintains an all core frequency of 3.5 to 3.6 GHz, which is actually quite a healthy boost above base clock. And in terms of power, it spikes 26.7 watts under the first turbo window and then maintains around a 19 watt power draw throughout. As for the system configurations, the Latitude 120L is the same as in the last video. So we have 2 GB of dual channel DDR2400 and we have an 80 GB parallel ATA hard drive and Windows 10 Pro 32 bit on the 6007 build of Windows 10. As for the 14S, we of course have the Core i3 1115G4. Now unfortunately HP only shipped this variant of the 14S with a single stick of 4GB DDR4-2666. Now this is not world's greatest RAM configuration, but I have benchmarked this machine thoroughly and compared numbers against much better equipped machines also with Tiger Lake i7. And I don't believe a much higher and 
RAM configuration would have made a world of difference. For storage we have a 256GB SATA 3 SSD and for Windows 10 we have the 64-bit Home Edition on the 20H2 update. We'll start with Speedometer 2.0. This is a JavaScript based web benchmark test that measures the responsiveness of web applications measured in runs per minute. Zero the Pentium M averaged 18.5 runs per minute and the Tiger Lake Core i3 averaged 154.4 runs per minute or 8.3 times as many runs. Next up is Google Octane 2.0 also a JavaScript based uh, web benchmark test and this measures a whole suite of different tests ranging from ray tracing to emulation to encryption to decryption to, a few, to name a few and at the end it gives you a score and in this case Pentium M got 5671 points and the i3 1115G4 got 53,020 points or 9.3x the score of the Pentium M Moving on to Kraken 1.1 by Mozilla. And just like Octane, this also is JavaScript based and has a suite of tests which it runs through with stuff like audio processing, image filtering, uh, cryptographic tests. And this measures the time it takes to complete those tests. And in the case of the Pentium M, that was 6544.9 milliseconds. And for the Tiger Lake i3, only 752.8 milliseconds, or 8.7 times as fast. Yeah. Next up is 7-Zip. Now 7-Zip includes a very neat tool which measures compression and decompression measured in millions of instructions per second. And here the Pentium M scored 1702 MIPS for the compression and 1558 for the decompression. Compare that to the Tiger Lake Core i3 that scored 16,546 MIPS for the compression, or 9.7x difference, and 12,645 MIPS for the decompression, or a 8.1x difference. Now these scores aren't particularly great considering 7-zip scales very well with extra core count. So we would have expected a bit more here. On to an old favorite, Cinebench R15. It's based on an older revision of Cinema 4D and like with all CD benches it renders a certain scene and it gives you a score at the end. Uh, the faster your CPU the higher the score. And here the Pentium M scored 0.4 points for both single and multi-thread as it only has one thread. And here the Tiger Lake i3 1115G4 scored 2.27 points for the single thread, or a 5.7x difference compared to the Pentium M and in multi-thread 5.26 points or a 13.1x difference. Next up is the POV ray ray tracing renderer and POV ray has been a popular benchmark for decades now and uh, a few years ago it got an update to 3.7.1 which got a nice performance boost for more modern processors and it's a ray tracing program that generates a certain image. The faster your CPU, the higher the score will be. And in this case, the Pentium M got a score of 68 points, and the Tiger Lake Core i3 got 556 for single thread, or a 8.2 times uh, as high of a score. And in multi thread, that score rose to 1201, or 17.7x compared to the Pentium M. Second to last, we have Geekbench 4.4, also a slightly older version of Geekbench as this supports 32-bit. And uh, for the CPU test, this claims to uh, model real-world uh, tests and applications, and it gives both a single and a multi-thread score. But strangely, the Pentium M only has one thread, but its um, single and multi-thread scores are different here, so that's a bit odd. Nevertheless, the Pentium M got 832 for single thread, 795 for multi thread, and the i3 i3 1115G4 scored 5420 for single thread, a 6.5x difference, and in multi thread that rose to 10,466 points, or a 13.2x difference. 
And last but not least, we have Y Cruncher, and in benchmark mode, this calculates pi to a certain number of digits, depending on how much system memory you have available. In this case, for the Pentium M machine, we only have two gigs of RAM. So uh, we calculated pi to 100 million digits in this case. And for Tiger Lake, Y Cruncher is a bit of a trump card, as um, Tiger Lake has AVX 512, and Y Cruncher can make use of that. And it shows Pentium M uh, took 784.4 seconds to complete the computation. Let's compare that to Tiger Lake. 15.6 seconds for single thread. That's 50 times as fast. And in multi-thread only 9.9 .9 seconds or 79.2 times as fast. That is an enormous difference. An interesting side note on the AVX 512 performance is that AVX 512 is known to use a lot of power within the CPUs. And that's also the case here with the 1115G4. Whereas with POV Ray earlier, we saw a peak power consumption of 26.7 watts. Now in Y Cruncher, this rises to 29.7 watts, exceeding the 28 watt package power limit multiple times. Also interesting is that it doesn't uh, hit the full 4.1 GHz turbo for quite as long now sustaining around 3.9 GHz, likely attempting to keep uh, the power somewhat in balance. And if we put all those performance figures together, we get the following picture. In purely multi-threaded tests, such as the POV Ray and Cinebench, we're looking at around a 13 to 17 X difference in terms of performance. And in more single thread oriented tasks, like the web tests and in, of course, a Cinebench single thread, the performance difference varies, looking at around 5.7x to 9.3x. So there's quite a variance there. However, that all changes when we include Y Cruncher, where getting, every, getting modern instruction sets going really aids performance. We're now looking at a 50 to 70x difference depending on single or multi threaded. So that is a huge difference. Lastly, I want to have a look at the more single threaded tasks. Now, some of these tasks, like Cinebench R15, are purely single-threaded, and others, like the web tests, are mostly single-threaded. There's a bit of multi-threading going on, but still mostly reliant on one single thread. And in this group, that averages out to a 7.7x difference in performance for the Tiger Lake i3 compared to Dothan. And that is quite a big number. But we have to keep in mind that part of that is also because Tiger Lake is able to run at a much higher frequency. So progress has not only been made on the amount of work that uh, is achieved during one clock cycle, but also by the amount of clock cycles the processor is able to run at within a second. In this case, that's 4.1 gigahertz for the Tiger Lake i3 and 1.73 gigahertz for the Pentium M Dothan. So if we take that into account, uh, because even in the worst case scenario, the i3 is still running at 3.5 gigahertz, or twice as fast as the Dawson. Uh, if we take that into account, the number shrinks to around a 3.8x average, with the worst being Cinebench R11.5 at 2.5x, and the best being Octane 2.0 at 4.7x. So, those have been some fascinating numbers, and massive amounts of progress have been made in other areas, but this was just purely focusing on these tasks I have tested both laptops at. And I'd like to know, what do you think of these numbers? Do you think enough progress has been made? Do you think things have slowed down? I'd like to know your opinion. In any case, that was all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have a comment, please do leave it below and why not subscribe in order to stay up to date on future projects? Well, that was all and bye bye.